हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू अवर लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन कंप्यूटेड इंजीनियरिंग ग्राफिक्स दैट इज सी ई जी वी वर डिस्कसिंग द यूनिट नंबर थ्री दैट इज आइसोमेट्रिक प्रोजेक्शन इन द लेसन नंबर वन वे आर अंडरस्टूड द प्रिंसिपल बिहाइंड आइसोमेट्रिक व्यू द यूजफुलनेस ऑफ आइसोमेट्रिक व्यू इन द लेसन नंबर टू वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ टू कंस्ट्रक्ट एन आइसोमेट्रिक व्यू will be using the enveloping box method for developing an isometric view over here wherein what we do is we just find out the maximum length height and width of this object based on the front view top view and side view we construct an isometric view of that enveloping box then find out the features from the front view top view and side view and try to develop these features within this enveloping box we will begin with a very simple example which is a rectangular box what you are able to see here is the front view of this box the length of this box is 40 mm height is 60 mm now what we are able to see in the front view that is length and height similarly we go for the top view in the top view we are able to have an additional dimension that is 25 mm that is the width of this object that is also seen in the left hand side view so you are able to see the left hand side view also we try to correlate this front view top view and side view all the three views shows us rectangular so what we will be visualizing is this is a rectangular box of length 40 mm height 60 mm and width 25 mm now once this is been clear we have to choose the front view direction while we are drawing that isometric view now what is given for us is left hand side view this has been given for us now since the left hand side view has been given for us the details on the left face that are to be clear so the right side isometric plane that will be our front view direction and the left side isometric plane our that will be left hand side view direction so front face appears on the right side isometric plane and the left face appears on the left side isometric plane the top face appears in usual manner now before we begin further let us understand how to draw that isometric view we begin with an ground line which is drawn on the right side that is blue color line next we construct a vertical line intersection of these two lines that will give us the origin since we have de <coughs> defined that right side will be the front view direction okay. in case of isometric view you will be having horizontal plane within the lines horizontal planes we will be having lines along the right side along the left side at an angle of 30 degrees so we mark that 30 degree angle first of all we get the length axis once we have obtained that length axis we go for the width axis also so that is drawn on the left side again we mark that 30 degree angle we also have that left side axis that is the width axis we'll move to the front face we'll be making use of the distance 40 mm and 60 mm we are developing construction lines once we draw that construction line we will be get the key four points and then we can darken it here we have darkened it with a red color so the details on the front face that is being clear we will move to the left plane in the left plane the new distance that is width that will be seen over here again we will be using construction lines to get the last critical point of this left plane once this has been obtained again we are going to darken this plane so the left plane this is been also completed here now for completing the top plane we don't need any another dimension over here so we are just going to make use of that originally obtained key points and we will be drawing construction lines along this axis okay and we will be able to complete the top plane so the basic thing regarding this isometric view or isometric drawing over here is we start with an horizontal line we fix the origin we fix the front view direction we obtain the length and width axis by making use of 30 degree lines on the left side and the right side all the vertical lines remain vertical we get the distances from the front plane top plane and the left plane and making use of that we are able to construct that figure over here now the whole procedure this has been described in the below table over here so the first step is draw a horizontal line then draw a vertical line representing the height axis then we have to show the front view direction 
depending upon the frontier directions, I have to draw a line at 30 degree to indicate the length axis. Now, in this case, it is on, on the right side. Also, I have to draw a line at the 30 degree in the opposite direction to indicate the width axis. I have to mark length and draw vertical projectors, I mark height and draw projectors in length and so on. We will be able to complete the all the details on the three planes. Next, we will see how to construct circles in an isometric cube. Now, the circles are not going to appear as circles in an isometric cube. The circles are going to appear as an ellipse. We will be using one method which is called as a four arc method to draw ellipse in this isometric view. Now, what we are able to see is we are able to see the isometric circle drawn on the first particular figure. Okay. So, what we shall do is we shall just zoom into this. So, I will focus my attention on this particularly one plane. Okay. So, in this view we have been given a front view and a top view and a side view. So, in the front view this is being seen as a circle, in the top view and the side view this is seen as a line. Now, once we have understood that this is a circle. So, what we do is we create a rhombus of size equal to the diameter of the circle. So, this is our first step. Once I completed this rhombus that is 40 by 40 millimeters, we identify the diagonals over here. So, there will be two diagonals, one diagonal shorter diagonal, the other one that is a longer diagonal. So, we connect the longer diagonal and we also identify the midpoints of the rhombus lines. After we have drawn that longer diagonal, what we do is we identify the ends of the shorter diagonal. From this ends, we draw lines to the opposite midpoints. Okay. So, what you are able to see over here is there are two lines which have been drawn. Now, we just try to find out intersection of these lines with the longer diagonal. So, you will be having one circle here. and another center here. Okay. So, we have two circle centers, one center here and another center here. So, we are able to see the two particular centers. Now, once I obtain this particular two centers, what we have to do is we have to draw an arc. Okay. Now, for drawing that arc, we will come to our place. Okay. So, C 1 as center and M 1 and M 2 as the end points of the arc. Okay. We have drawn two arcs over here. Similarly, I also drawn another arc C 2 as center and M 3 and M 4 as the end point. Once I have drawn these two particular arcs, okay, we have to draw remaining two arcs since this is a four arc method over here. We will be choosing the corner points of the shorter diagonal. So, what we have is C 3 as the one particular center and C 4 as the fourth center. So, C 3 as center radius as C 3 to M 2, we draw an arc between M 2 and M 3. Similarly, C 4 as center M 1 C 4 to M 4 as the radius, we draw an arc between M 4 and M 1. Okay. So, this way what we will be able to is, we will be able to complete the whole ellipse for a circle to be represented on the right side isometric plane. Same thing I can do on the left side plane as well as the top plane. Okay. And the last figure that we will show you, okay, a combination of drawing ellipse on the three particular planes, right isometric plane, left isometric plane on the top plane. The basic important point of this drawing an isometric circle is to have four centers. How do we get this? We draw an rhombus 
of size equal to the diameter of the circle. Then we identify the longer diagonal, we draw that longer diagonal and then we identify the end points of the shorter diagonals, connect these end points to the opposite midpoints, you will be getting two uh, center points. With these two as center points and the corresponding radius, we will be able to draw two arcs. Then ends of the shorter diagonals, they also act as uh, remaining two centers and we are able to complete the remaining two arcs. Okay. So, this is the way we will be able to complete that isometric circle. We will come to the end of our session right now. In the next lecture, we will be doing all these thing with the help of AutoCAD software. So, we will be just learning how to use an AutoCAD software to construct isometric drawing.